stitch after stitch, single, double, pull through, repeat. Stitch after stitch, row after row, my mother would crochet. Her fingers intertwined with the yarn, her hook moving methodically, rhythmically, a movement long since memorized by her hands. Saturday morning cartoons meant sharing her lap with a blanket that grew longer than I was tall. When she worked, I saw only yarn, but she saw life in her threads. Each stitch, interconnected and dependent on the one before, was a friend, a family member, a neighbor whose path had intertwined with her own. Each row, a story to tell. Each Afghan, a collection of her past. Of course, I was too young to understand. Grasping, pulling, unwinding the threads. When I had the dexterity to hold a hook of my own, we would practice. Leaning over my shoulder, she'd take my hands in hers, together turning skein to stitches. Single, double, pull through, repeat. Her patience was enough for both of us, for I gave up too quickly, leaving unfinished projects and unspoken frustration behind. And when teenage hormones bred my frustration into indignation, we began drifting apart, fraying at the seams, so she stitched incessantly, trying to keep the threads from unwinding. But even a perfect row can come undone with a single pull. Abnormal knots are easy to feel in afghans, but not in breasts. So slowly, her stitches stopped. Fatigue set in faster than her weak hands could crochet. Her bony fingers resembled crochet hooks, but could not hold one. And her thin hair fell like cut threads. I covered her in afghans of stitched memories to comfort her, then wrapped them around her when she died. If my heart were stitched, it would have unraveled a bleeding heap of thread. Her final afghan sorrily draped across her chair, her hook in her last loop but a row of memories left unfinished. Grasping the hook in my hand, guiding the lonely thread through, I felt her hands on mine once again, finishing the final rows together, stitch after stitch.